Hey everyone, <clears throat> thanks for tuning in. I am about to go live with Dr. Beck and Patrick Mazin from UMatrix. Uh, we're going to be talking about all things EMF and our biology. So it looks like they are on right now, so I'm just going to let them in and we will get started. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, just one second. Hello. Hey guys. No. Can't How's hear it going? Anything. Can you hear me? So what's going on here first? <laughs> Let's put it. Um... Also, I see you sideways. Can you flip it? Yeah. Turn this. Ah, yeah, like perfect. Okay. There you go. And then... Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can no. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We you can't can hear you. You can't hear me? Uh, Technical difficulty. <laughs> not sure why. Um, okay. Um, can you hear, not hear me? Can you not hear me? No? No? No. I know. Okay. Uh, now, can you hear me? Can you hear me? What is this? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? No. No. We can't hear you. But you can hear us. You can hear us, but... We can hear right. you. So, I don't know what to so do now. let's try joining. Let's just try... Can you hear us now? I hear you. There oh, we go. There we go. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. now we can. All right. The microphone just didn't work with, uh, with this one. Okay. I just other day so hi how's it going hey dr mark good, <laughs> good fantastic to see you guys beautiful weather out there wow nice yes we'll we'll give you a little view to be um would you like to see the view now or would you oh, like to sure see let's let's see the view okay right, everyone's like giving the thumbs up yep let's see the view <laughs> oh nice wow very cool very tropical Yes. It's Very horrible, cool. right? I mean. <laughs> terrible. Just terrible. So All right. it's a good so, yeah. place to talk about EMFs, right? Perfect. Yeah. Very low EMF exposure out there. Um, why don't, before we get started, why don't you guys kind of give a brief uh, introduction to who you are, uh, what U-Matrix is, and um, yeah. Great. Okay. Yes. Hi. I'm... Dr. Mindy Beck, and um, my background is in chronic infectious disease, and I, I found that many years ago, my patients just weren't recovering as fast as they should have with the treatments that they were getting, and what had changed the most in the environment? Technology. So I started looking into that, and it led me many years later now into helping to start a company, Now You Matrix, originally Tealis Biotech, that would help educate people about how, what these electromagnetic frequencies are first, how they affect our biology, and then how can we actually use them to our benefit. So that's, uh, that's what we're about, You Matrix. And for myself, my name is Patrick Marzin, and pe some people know me under the name Merlin. of Merlin. <laughs> Merlin. He's this is actually Merlin. this is actually how my last name translates into the Brittany language, which my origins are for, from in um, in the northwest of France. Uh, an injury got me to um, run into a therapy and a concept that um, I was not looking for, <laughs> and um, the conceptor is name is Pierre Nicolas. Uh, he has been studying electromagnetic radiation, remediation, and making tools for... So he started 60 years ago, and he's been making tools for over 30 years. And um, what happened to me... Oh, and we have another French uh, guest here. Yes. Uh, we have a little, uh, beautiful little French bulldog that's running around. Oh, nice. Um, 
So uh, Pierre, he's, he's not the only. Yeah, French I'm not the only. I don't, I, don't, I don't have the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so he um, he actually um, realized that um, uh, there was a way to. Jury that actually I was able to heal very quickly by using those therapies. And I said, okay, what is that? <laughs> so in 2012, I started to follow Pierre Nicola and when he would come in the US and teach and when he would go to um, other countries in the world, I was always showing up and he said, you keep, you keep showing up. And I said, well, yeah, I have a good reason for it because uh, you helped me. So um, he um, offered us to be part of this in a more subsequent matter and um give him a voice here in the u.s great so um, it's go ahead no 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 that was a great introduction um into how you guys got sorry i mean obviously the history is very long it's <laughs> that was very 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 brief intro but i think uh yeah anything else you want to say about that so um and the reason why we don't want to actually expand too much on it, because we could actually speak, it's, it's a long story actually how we got here. We could spend the whole uh, hour. We could spend, we don't want to do and that. Yeah. we have actually a lot of things to cover today, I think. Yeah. So we'll try to actually uh, make it efficient for everybody so that uh, we make everybody's time worthwhile. Um, I think the biggest things um, that we constantly are being asked and even your viewers have been asking is what is EMF? What is EMR? What is, what is right. it? And Patrick actually did a lot of research to make sure he can make it really succinct and teach people how, what these yeah. frequencies are. So how do we actually explain this without going into the, the rabbit hole, <laughs> right? Uh, so EMF, electromagnetic uh, frequencies, electromagnetic fields, EMR, electromagnetic radiation, ultimately, they are natural EMRs and EMF, and they are artificial EMF and EMR. So art let's, let's start with the, um, artificial ones. So everything that actually has, is using electricity, is using electronic, is going to produce a field. So electricity, um, those are called uh, low frequencies. They are like in the US, it's 60 Hertz. And they are used to power like a light bulb, uh, a motor, a hair dryer, a wash machine, um, all sorts of things. They can be used to recharge a battery. And um, they produce fields that um, have a uh, wavelength. They have a frequency. And this is where it gets confusing. It's like... So what is a wavelength? It's, it's the dimension of when you have a analog. So when we talk about analog, is a signal that is like our voice is sending an analog signal. And it has a continuous wave that actually goes up and down. And um, it is transferred into um, a receiver and can be read. So like your radio station is sending the signal and so on. So the wavelength is the, the, the dimension between each one of the peaks or each one of the bottoms or each one of the middle points. You don't really need to actually retain all of that. I'm trying to actually give uh, an understanding of what a wavelength is and then what a uh, frequency is. So the frequency is that when you have this wavelength, the frequency is how many times we're going to produce this wavelength in a, uh, a, a time limit, which is measured in seconds. So you're going to have so many wavelengths of this will produce in, a, in per second. And we call that hertz. So it could be, for electricity, it's like 60 hertz. Um, then we have higher frequencies for like cell phones, which are in a range actually between uh, one uh, megahertz, uh, it's, um, I'm forgetting my hertz now, it's one uh, a gigahertz to uh, 2.5. And then you have ionizing frequencies, 
that are in the uh, gamma and x rays which are above uh, six and so on and we're going to talk and we'll we'll go through this conversation about what is going on with 5g as opposed to what's going on with 4g and i know there's a lot of questions that came up before uh, this today and um, we are going probably to answer all those questions uh, as they come in the loop of what we're trying to explain about those frequencies. Someone, someone had commented that there's no sound. Can, I can hear you and you can hear me. Can, can people not hear us talking? Okay, sound's working, that's fine. Okay, continue, so, sorry. Everything's yeah. fine? Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have all those frequencies that are uh, radiating from our electrical services, power lines, electricity in our houses, all our devices that are telecommunications, such as Wi-Fi routers, cell phones, uh, cell phone um, relays, and so on. Um, and today, I'm not trying to do a whole, because we could actually talk about this for two days, just on frequencies. Um, I want to actually people to understand what they are, what the influence is on the biology, what it's keeping us from getting in order to be able to deal with those frequencies. So those frequencies, they will, um, um, so let me um, go back on the, uh, all right. So we have all sorts of frequencies that are hitting us and they are, so we talk about wavelengths, I wanted to talk about bandwidth and we'll come back to that when we talk about 5G. The bandwidth is the amount of frequencies that are carried by the communication frequencies we have. So it's, this is where it gets a little confusing for people. It's like wavelength, bandwidth. Um, for example, today, the promise is that 5G will, I guess I'm going to talk about it now. 5G is going to be uh, producing 20 at the minimum, to up to 60 times more frequency in the same bandwidth. So per second, it's the amount of bits that are being produced. Digital frequencies, which is what is being used in cell phones today, are like a binary system, zero, one. So it's like, it's literally like a bar that actually has a different height and a combination of bars successfully uh, um, that actually one after the other is going to create a curve up and down, which is going to be looking kind of like an analog signal. So we're trying to reproduce the original signal, which was analog. We trans translate it into a language that is digital, so we can use less power and less space in order to transfer it into a system, which allows us to transfer a lot more information. Make sense? I don't so want that, to go too. So that's 5G. So that's that's 5G. Um, we're looking at um, frequencies, uh, like I said, that are going to be 20 to 60 times more frequencies in the same space. Maybe, and this is maybe, maybe um, it'd be good now to maybe take a step back and talk a little bit about uh, the difference between artificial versus man-made frequencies and, and why that distinction is important for our biology. Right. So um, those artificial frequencies that we talked about and the natural frequencies also are EMF. So the Earth, um, I'm sure many people have heard uh, these terminologies called uh, Schumann resonance. The Schumann resonance is a combination of uh, information that is compiled uh, on Earth. Um, one of the information, which is the basic distribution of the information, is a geomagnetic network. And this is literally magnetic information that is a flux that emanates from the Earth. And it's a grid system that is covering the whole entire Earth. It's Earth, it's pretty precise actually because each one of those uh, squares or rectangles actually are two meters by 2.5 meters. And they have a very particular thing that's going to make sense 
to everyone that's listening, I hope, um, when um, we go to, back to the biology, the walls in those rectangles of this geomagnetic network have a thickness of 21.1 centimeter. And I'll give you what 21.1 centimeter is. It's the wavelength of hydrogen. So we're talking about wavelength. You see, it's like, you know, in artificial frequencies, we can have a wavelength, but everything in life has a wavelength. The uh, hydrogen atom is the most important element on the um, nuclear table because it's the basic element and it's the smallest and it's the most simple. It has only one electron. And one of the characteristic, characteristic and I'm telling you this, you, you probably think it's like, where is he going with this? <laughs> the characteristic of hole. the characteristic of the, no, this is very important. The characteristic of the hydrogen atom is to be able to give off or borrow an electron very willingly. It's the most willing atom to be able to do this, which actually changes the structure of whatever it is associated with. And what we're interested in, in the biology, which we're going to go now, is the ionization, the ionic structure of the water, which we are made mostly of, 70%, and also the bonds in the uh, DNA. So there is also a factor that influence, and this is where, and I will actually bring uh, Dr. Min into this because we're going to talk about synchronization. In order for the biology to function properly, it has to be informed of its environment. The synchronization is important because that geomagnetic network we were talking about is changing constantly. It has influencers and factors that changes very subtle. It's, um, it's quantum. But first we have one thing, a cycle that we call the 24-hour uh, clock, which is the position of the sun in uh, relation to where we are, is influencing uh, this geomagnetic network by its influence with its photon distribution. During the day, as the sun is rising, it's creating different uh, light structure and photon distribution that will influence the magnetic network. This is called a, we call it the electric vector or the vertical vector. But associated with the sun, there is also the mass of the sun. There's also the mass of the, like the moon. We know that the moon is moving the oceans. So every single element that are surrounding us has a component in the geomagnetic network. It's changing the information we have. And we think it's not important because it's very, very small. Actually, it's primordial. This is what dictates us to do what we're supposed to do, when we're supposed to do it, in the spectrum of the chronobiology, which is as described by Chinese, uh, in the Chinese medicine. We have regeneration cycles that are based on the position of the sun. And every two hours, 12 cycles times two, we have a set of organs that regenerate in a very specific order. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world, it's going to repeat. So now we have the biology. The biology creates its own electromagnetic signal. And um, I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but I will tell you, for example, that the heart, when it's pumping, the red blood cells that have, so the hemoglobin and the, the iron that's coming from the bone marrow, uh, the iron has a magnetic characteristic and the activity of the heart when it's pumping, actually it's doing this spinning and it's spinning the red blood cells. And we have what? When it's coming out of the arteries, we have a electro magnetic uh, characteristic in our blood. Then when the blood is losing oxygen and getting CO2, the iron is going to bond to get rid of the CO2. So in the arteries, we are electromagnetic 
as the, the oxygen is depleted and needs to be recharged and the CO2 needs to be processed by the lungs, we have a magnetoelectric activity. So we have fluctuations of electric and magnetic. As a matter of fact, we can measure this. The pH, for example, which is the hydrogen potential, not by chance, the hydrogen potential, and I know it may get a little heady, but you're going to be happy, I promise. <laughs> um, the hydrogen potential is actually measuring the concentration of protons. The more protons in the fluid, so it's like if, if um, the hydrogen atom loses its electron, it's going to be charged positively. That's the proton activity. The proton activity the more protons, the more you are magnetically, magnetic plus and acidic. The least proton, the more you are magnetic, minus magnetic, negative magnetic, and alkaline. Then you have the RH2, which is the potential of reduction of oxidation. So it's the concentration of electrons you'll see that this is all going to make sense. Why I'm saying this is how it relates to the influence of electromagnetic radiation. So we have a potential of reduction or oxidation that is based on the amount of electrons that are concentrated in the solution, which, whether it's our spinal fluid, our blood, our lymph. Then we have a conductivity, which is based on the amount of minerals we have in the blood, so and all the fluids in our body. Conductivity, the more minerals you have, the more you are receptive to currents and electricity, which makes you permeable to EMF. But it's not a bad thing, because if you combine the things properly, you're going to have a body that can resist. So now, we have found, uh, research have actually demonstrated that electromagnetic frequencies will uh, interfere with the movement of electrons within the water molecule. This activity is basically telling the electron, you need to be here randomly instead of you're going to be here because you want to be. Like kind of like, it's kind of like we're, we're taking the... Um, um, the master-slave relation, basically. And when that happens, we're losing the exchange that happens within the water molecules and we're destructuring the water. Consequences are not only the water now is not as conductive and um, able to communicate between all the systems and between your cells, within your cells, and on top of it, it is not hydrating because it is not water anymore. It is not like its potential. It's kind of like we took something and we made it very um, unperformant. If, if it keeps happening under the influence of very strong fields, then you're losing efficiency in your body and you're actually degenerating or you could develop cancers because your adaptation is not efficient anymore. So we can go and, uh, and uh, we can go forever about this. So, uh, so what ba I want basic, basically, in, in summary, you, what you're saying is that these fields interact with the bonds in water and DNA. And that's primarily how, in a, in a kind of simplistic overview kind of way, these fields can directly impact biology is through the interaction between those electric bonds, um, primarily in water and, and like you were saying, DNA. Yes. Correct. And, and, um, and the, the hydrogen, so I'm going to go back to now the hydrogen, the biology. So we talk about there is actually an electronic makeup in the body, right? And this electronic makeup is dependent on the very important information that is the true information in order to be balanced properly. And remember when I said the uh, walls of those, uh, this uh, geomagnetic network is 
the wavelength of hydrogen. This is how we can keep the proper master mechanism in the biology, which is called the spin mechanism. The hydrogens in the water molecule are spinning, so they have rotations that are called uh, left and right, or a little more science is levogir and dextrogir. And those rotations have to be synchronized in order to uh, provide the most efficient structure and the most balanced and the most energetic structure in the water molecule. And just take a radio station. You want to listen to a radio station that's broadcasting at 105, for example, on your FM station. And in order to receive that, you need to have a tuner that can actually tune into that channel at 105. There is several things that's going to keep you from doing that. First, if your tuner is not properly tuned and uh, you cannot actually get 105, or you have a poor antenna, or you have a disruption. So all those things are happening with electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation will actually uh, put enough distortion and uh, enough um, um, chaos in your body and around you to keep you from getting those messages that allow you to actually be able to be resilient to those very artificial frequencies. See, artificial frequencies are not going to kill you or give you autism or give you uh, Alzheimer's uh, overnight, combined with other things such as chemical pollution and stress, trauma, emotional, metals, all those things. But ultimately, how do we keep our body from being left unharmed? Is by tuning into that signal via the uh, wavelength. And the so, so yeah, yeah. So, so in summary, in addition to the direct biological effects, it is blocking our access to these natural frequencies in our environment that our bodies require for proper self-regulation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, uh, the direct biological effect is artificial frequencies, especially um, high frequencies like uh, microwave frequencies we use for phones, uh, create an abnormal agitation of the water molecule, which disturb that ionic exchange as well and the combination of those clusters. Because ultimately, you want to have structured water in your, in your body. Right. And structured water is the, the ultimate structured water is a, um, a cluster of three water molecules together. This is the most hydrating. This is like a beautiful water. <laughs> um, it's structured. Yes. So this is what you want. You want to have actually structured water so that you can recharge your battery. Your water in your body with a combination of the activity of your hormonal system, your kidneys, your liver, pancreas, gallbladder, I mean, all the organs are actually working together to make sure that your water, and depending on the water itself, it's a whole two-way street, is performing to recharge so that every time you take a blow, you can get back on top. And this is what we're getting very rarely today. We are not actually getting this information we're being disconnected from it, and uh, we'll talk about how we can connect to it. And I would like for uh, Dr. Mindy to talk about all those chemical reactions that happen in our body that are actually dependent on all that synchronization. So, yes, I'd like to just do a really quick summary. So, EMR. She's good with that because I kind of take <laughs> loops, you know. <laughs> there are multiple forms of electromagnetic frequencies or radiation. There's the artificial ones, and there are the natural ones. And the natural ones are the ones that are generated by all the synchronization of all the systems in our universe. So this is the information that literally allows us to be self-healing. So the key points are we have to have access to that information, and then so and it has to be structured in a very particular way. And then we have to have that information be able to be carried in a system that has an appropriate structure, so i.e. the water. So how does that happen? Because there's, 
37,000 billion billion chemical reactions that are happening every second in our body. <laughs> That's crazy, right? I mean, just stop to think about all of that. So your, your cells are the maestro and you have a trillion uh, musicians playing for you, right? How do you coordinate all of that? And that is what exactly what Patrick, excuse me, Merlin was talking about. I, I go by both names. It's okay. I organize is, myself. <laughs> is that these, this is coordinated by the spin, the spin mechanism. This is the language of the biology. And so we have to tune in so that each one of those uh, musicians can be playing their tune in harmony. And this musician is working off, this musician who's working off all other trillions of musicians. This is the absolutely critical, unfathomable point. And so when we think that we can take one substance and put it in our body, and it's not going to change all of those 37,000 billion billion chemical reactions um, and how it's going to influence our cells and how what they're doing is really <laughs> as you know this was the part as being a physician it's it's like being the maestro right I mean we have to help people to be able to coordinate those impulses and that that's those spins so you're saying actually i mean if we could create a computer um the biggest computer in the world let's say we take 25 blocks in new york and we build the biggest computer in the world that has the ability to manage those uh, trillions maybe quadrillions actually of chemical reactions per second by the time it's built it's missed um exponentially uh, of that and by the time you start to use it it's not um, adequate anymore because all the data is kind of like if you actually really change the software on the computer overnight, but not overnight, it's like every nanosecond. Nature is changing its information infinitely and constantly. And this is what creates um, a we lag. Need, and we require, we require dynamic access to that information. Right. Exactly. And so what happens is like when you desynchronize yourself. So, for example... Um, people that are exposed to a lot of um, uh, artificial frequencies. Especially now, people are spending a lot more time on their devices and so on. So people are actually absorbing a lot more of those frequencies. And what happens is uh, the water system starts to weaken. The reactivity of rebuilding the system is weakening as well. And what you have is people are starting to synchronize with artificial frequencies because they are talking louder than the rest and more frequently. The longer you're exposed to frequency, the more um, damaging it is. And the more frequencies you're exposed to at the same time, it is not actually one plus one equals two, it's one plus one equals 10 actually. Or exponential. And this, this is, yes. Oh, so Dr. Mark, do you remember that um, study that we shared with you about the, the, um, the, the Russian, where they take a tissue that they can suspend in life for 48 hours. Okay, so this is a, a they do that chemically. And then they take that tissue and they expose it to, um, what is it called? Uh, to a, one frequency. And it, the life of the tissue goes from 48 hours down to 24. Okay. Then they take a new tissue, expose it to two frequencies. It goes down to eight hours. Okay. Then we do we take it, expose it to three frequencies, and it goes down to one hour. So it's really about how many drops do you have in your bucket, and if we can help to influence those drops, and just by helping to harmonize one of those frequencies, your body has a fighting chance to be able to 
harmonize itself and to be self-healing. With, with all those uh, artificial frequencies, what would you say potentially be the most uh, harmful in terms of uh, exposure long-term? You were saying like cell phone frequencies, um, Wi-Fi frequencies, uh, frequencies from, from you know, electronics, so from laptops, from what, what's the most insidi insidious, like would you say? That. It's okay. So um, there is one that uh, actually is more, uh, dis we disregard one that's uh, more, uh, people don't talk as, as much about it, but it's electricity. And um, electricity at a very specific time, which is when you're sleeping. So we will have electricity in our bedrooms and, um, and there is actually a reset that happens in your, uh, so we didn't talk about biorhythms. I, we'll just actually go as uh, this come because um, there is so many information that we can share, but the biorhythms is um, the coordination uh, mainly. To, so your cranial rhythm, your, uh, the rhythm of your diaphragms, your pelvic floor. So your air column is lungs and diaphragm abdominal. And then your water column is your spinal fluid. Your spinal fluid dictates the activity of the diaphragm, the main diaphragm, and all the other diaphragms for that matter, based on the movement of your cranial bones. And people say, well, my bones are not moving. Yes, they are. It's like 50 microns. It's very small. Energetically, you can feel it. It's actually, um, if all it's All those working, cranial sacral therapists if, out there know. Right. If it's actually working properly, uh, you have a proper coordination of the movement of the diaphragm that assists all your organs. And uh, so cell phones are very, very uh, quick at impacting those movements. But at 4 a.m., uh, solar uh, dial, not uh, daylight savings, at 4 a.m., anywhere you're in the world, and it's, it, it, it's orange, actually. It's like you can be like 20 minutes before, 20 minutes after. Um, We, did we lose you? Oh, for, yeah. for a second, yeah, but you're back. Yeah. Okay, the, the biorhythm stops for um, a few seconds to a few minutes. But it's really actually pretty short, usually, a few seconds. What happens is that it's a recalibration, a resynchronization with the movements of the sun and the, um, the Schumann resonance and all the information that is around us. When that happens, if you are resetting in an ambience that has been occulted, by electricity, and then I'll come to uh, cell phones and tablets and so on, and routers. You are resetting with an information that is not dynamic. You're resetting with an information that is actually talking over the subtle frequencies that you really want to be synchronized with. And um, we don't, I mean, there is all kind of systems out there, it's like people use a uh, system to actually treat dirty electricity. We're not talking about dirty electricity, we're talking about electricity period. Whether you have your service on or off, you can actually shut your breaker, you will still actually be, um, so you're not gonna have a direct impact like we talked about before, but you're going to have a suppression of the access to the geomagnetic network, because especially if you shut your breaker at your meter, um, you're going to have a, you're going to create a static uh, field. And also you still will have a uh, connection with your uh, ground rods that is attached to your service. That's going to disturb your electrical service. So you have to treat your electrical service in order to have a coherent geomagnetic information around you. And um, Pierre has been, Pierre, uh, Pierre Nicolas is our partner and inventor and engineer. He, um, he has been <laughs> talking until he's blue in the face and he says, you guys are not doing, doing the things I'm telling you that are so simple to do. It's like, yes, of course you have to treat your cell phone. And he says, this is the next thing you need to treat. Because the jet lag that I was talking about earlier is if you, if you travel, and what happens with jet lag, it's not too much the time zone. It's the fact you're traveling at high speed and high altitude, and you're disconnected from the information, the Schumann resonance. 
and such as the uh, first man in space actually suffered from. And NASA actually went to work and said, oh, and they studied the work of uh, Schumann, and they created an oscillator that would reproduce the Schumann resonance, which was not a complete 100% solution, but it actually worked pretty well. In the long term, it will not work because it's not dynamic. You cannot actually imitate nature with a machine. So now we have a jet lag, which is when you get to the place where you're going after flying seven hours, for example, if you're traveling to Europe, you have lost a progressive informational uh, set of, uh, the, the set of information is not progressive anymore. So you, you went from one place and you go to the other place, it's a different ambience, different magnetism, different electricity. Uh, I'm not talking about artificial electricity, I'm talking about the cosmic vectors and so on. And you have to relearn all of that, which is what we call the jet lag. You are not in sync anymore, and you have to actually get some rest. You, some people adapt very quickly because they have a good water system. And some people, they may never get back and sink for like four weeks. I mean, we've seen it with people it's like, I still can't get back because you have to be able to tune into the proper information. So we have tools for that too, by the way. But jet lag is happening more and more today where people feel tired and um, it leads into depression and it actually leads it, can lead into chronic disease. Because the more jet lag you have, the more you're not regenerating the way you should be with the proper information. If my heart is supposed to regenerate at, I don't know, five, I don't, I don't know my... Uh, 11, 11 you know, to 1. I know when the During the day. I know when the liver is actually supposed to regenerate, which is the most important thing for me. <laughs> but anyway, so you have you have information that are supposed to support a specific set of organs at a very specific time. And we completely disregard it because we try to treat everything with chemicals. When actually if you have the proper electromagnetic information, the chemicals won't matter as much. It's not so much what you're putting in your body is it's more what you're not getting access to that actually allows you to treat that. So we don't have ever jet lags. And we actually had the most in intensive travel back in 2019, uh, 2018, I'm sorry, where uh, going, to, going to California from Florida, going from Florida to uh, California to France, and then back from California uh, my friends to, friends. To, to California sure. and um, and then having to actually uh, and we actually had to do uh, these changes at the last minute so we uh, we went like um, uh, that was all in 10 days yeah it was three hours back uh, nine hours forward and then six hours back and and um, and we have no jet lag whatsoever we were tired from traveling but like after a day was done finished why? Because we are, we are able to actually tune into the Schumann resonance even when we're on the plane. So that, that leads us into a really good segue into the next topic. Uh, okay, so, you know, general overview, it affects it, the EMFs, artificial EMFs can directly impact our biology through the bonds of water and through our DNA. It blocks our access to these natural frequencies. So what, what can we do? To mitigate that, should we would be turning it all our electricity off? Should we be using more blocking products, some of your products that, that help to so let, let so explain some of some yes. of these ideas. Let's let um let's talk about what the real solution is. Okay. The only way we can we can't block the artificial frequencies. It, it just we can't absorb them, we can't redirect them. Well we can redirect them, but it's well, like uh Yes. It's not solving the problem. They're still uh, there. Let, let me say this, um, if you don't mind, Dr. Mindy. Um, there is one thing that people don't ever look at is if you are trying to block, redirect, um, what you're doing, you're not getting, so you're getting rid of the direct impact. Maybe. But what you're not doing is giving the access back because you still have this um, chaotic field that is suppressing the access to the information. And ultimately, it's been proven that if you're deprived from the natural frequencies, you will perish. It might take several years, or maybe it can be two days. 
this is very, very important to understand is you need to access those frequencies. So um, back to this, because this is the, the, the one thing that nobody is addressing. Everybody thinks it's like the direct impact is the biggest problem. It is a problem, but it's not the only problem. It's the suppression of the system that allows you to not be harmed by your direct impact. Because you can actually, um, I'll give you a very quick example and, and mean you can go back on, but um, our brain has been proven, it's been proven that our brain can produce gamma um, frequencies. frequencies, which are ionizing. If our brain can actually produce gamma ionizing frequencies without actually being harmed, that means the body is able to build a defense for it. And this is where I'm going to. It's like we, our biology has absolutely no limit. I mean, Dr. Mindy was talking about 37,000 billion billion chemical reactions per second. This is, and this is actually a, an estimate. It could be more or less, but it's quadrillions basically. <laughs> so, um, so then how do all those things get coordinated, right? How do all those chemical reactions? It's all dictated by the natural frequencies in your environment. So what did, what did Pierre create? So Pierre Nicola, for those who are just joining, is the inventor of all the Umatrix products, but uh, he's been at this for 60 years. So what he realized is that Instead of trying to fight these artificial frequencies, let's use them. So let's use them as a carrier to allow your body access to the natural frequencies so that it can, it can coordinate all those 37,000 billion billion reactions. Um, so what is that? That is, in our case, we have several tools currently available one being for the cell phone. So it's using the cell phone frequency itself to, as a portal to allow your body access to those natural frequencies. So this sounds a little bit magical, perhaps, Merlin, does it? It is magical. Merlin is magical too. So. Yes. <laughs> so, and how it's doing this is, Think of the, um, the cell phone um, as a bell, all right? And these artificial fre frequencies are the hammer, and they hit that hammer. Well, you want to create the right resonance, right? So what the U-Matrix 5G, for instance, for the cell phones, what it does is allows that harmony or allows that frequency to be harmonized in a way that your body can recognize it. And how can it recognize it? If it's spinning. That's the key. All the natural frequencies are always spinning and they're dynamic. So they're changing every nanosecond as well to orchestrate all those, those reactions that are going on in your body. So we have to be at all times in sync with that information. Um, and then there are, there's tools, all, all of our tools work the same way. They are a portal to access the proper information using the electromagnetic pollution as its carrier, as its, as its catalyst. And then the, um, the technical uh, aspect of the, um, so technology, uh, your cell phone signal doesn't actually get affected uh, very much because we're working on the quantum level and at the biological level. So um, the, the portion of the frequency of the cell phone, for example, that we're interested in uh, transforming is not going to affect your device, but it's going to affect the portion that the biology can actually respond to, which is we're making it spin, literally. We're making that frequency spin, which allows one thing that is very basic to understand, in my opinion, is we have a static signal. So let's say, let's go back to the radio station. This radio station is broadcasting a program I want to listen to, but I'm getting only static. The DJ is talking, the, the radio station is sending the message, the signal, the communication, but I'm not getting it. 
And because there is static, for whatever reason, my system is maybe not powerful enough to receive it, or there is interruption. In order to actually get to the usable signal, which is the, the show I want to actually listen to, I have to suppress the static because the signal is there. It's just I can't hear it over the static. And those tools are actually acting exactly like this. It's playing on the ratio of the static and usable signal. So there is two, uh, two uh, outcomes to this, two positive outcomes. One is that you cannot get access to the signal. And second, the signal itself that is producing the static is getting harmonized because now it's spinning. And the biology says, oh, I know what it is and I know how to actually deal with it. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have, today we have more and more people, in, uh, and it's getting alarming, uh, people that are becoming EHS, which is electro hypersensitive. And electro hypersensitive people is like, why like, two people in the same family, one is electro, uh, one is EHS and one is not. It's because they have different ways of rebuilding their, their uh, resilience. And uh, so there is also other things like genes and, uh, you know, heritage, uh, genetical um, heritage and, and things like this. But the biology is meant to actually rebuild itself. It's just not knowing how to do it because it's kind of like at a loss. It's kind of lost in the desert. It's like, you know, I need water. I don't know where to find it. It's like, no, so we're bringing the water. So that's one. And then in our, our bodies, our bodies have to be able to receive that information and utilize it. So how does it do that? Through the water. And the water has to be structured in a very particular manner so that that information can be translated and thus hydrating the tissues, but also helping to organize everything the way in which it's supposed to so that your body can regenerate. So Dr. Mark, we can't actually control everything around us. There is so many signals and they're, they're actually proliferating. So we can't control everything and people say, well, what do I do? It's like, I have this, I have this, uh, my neighbor has a router and the guy, uh, and people are like, and say, control what you can because it's not about, the biology actually has a lot of strength. And people say, well, I have to do 100% of what I can do in order to be well. It's like, no, sometimes it takes like even taking off 2% of the aggression from those waves to actually change the direction of where you're going with your biology. So if you're in a de degenerative state and you actually cut a little bit of the invasion, your biology is gonna be like, okay, I've got a little bit of a reprieve and I can go in the right direction. So it's not about doing everything. It's about doing what you can. And we will say, uh, handle what you can and you will see Amazingly, because those tools don't just give you um, access to the information, it actually starts, your, your body starts to actually reorganize itself. Mm -hmm. And we have some exciting products we'll be launching soon to help people repair the damages. So without having to go to um, um, it's extensive treatments um, that will actually help people restore, for example, the uh, integrity and the competence of their um, endocrine system, for example. And so it, it, we're pretty excited because ultimately, like Dr. Mindy said, if you have the right information, but you still can't use it because your system is broken down, mm -hmm. we can help people with that too. And we're hoping to, uh, we're working very hard. It's been very tricky because, um, so our chief engineer, Pierre Nicola, um, is confined in France right now. And he was supposed to be here at the end of March. And uh, he says, I can't wait to be there. We have this lab that's like sitting idle right now. We need to develop all those things. I said, you know, um, so we're trying to actually work at the distance. We created a few products um, since then, but uh, uh, it's very interesting. So we're really in the, in, and, and we're willing to answer any question. Um, we've been doing this with Dr. Mindy and Pierre's been doing this for decades to really help people. Um, we don't actually, what, what is important for us is the result and giving a direction for people to be able to say, hey, you know what, maybe there is actually a way where I can take care of myself besides everything else I'm doing, such as taking maybe some supplements and things like that and seeing my uh, Dr. Mark. And uh, um, it, it's very important because it's all 
um, complementary. And yeah. any treatment that anybody is doing of any sort, if it has any chance of working, will even work better if you get access to the information because your biology will actually find the way to use it even better. So this is the, the exciting part. So that brings us to a, a common question, right? Well, does, you know, we always get, so does this product work? Does this work? Does that work? Um, does this service, what, what, you know, and it, it would literally take us all day just to analyze all those different products. So here's a little tidbit. We always ask people, Okay, so is the information that that product is, is it allowing you access to the information that your body needs to be self-healing? So, and is that information in sync with the information of your environment? So that's, that's the big, big thing. And can your body use that in relation to its personal structure. So the, those are the key questions. Synchronization uh, is definitely the number one uh, key element of what we're doing. And um, I'll, I'll just, yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to interject just one real question. It's actually uh, a per, a, more of a selfish personal question. I've always want, wondered about this. Um, and I've actually, some, someone's asked me about it, uh, organ. And, and how does organ work in terms of, so just to give a little bit of a recap of what you talked about in terms of how your, the products that you've worked on and developed work is that the artificial frequencies that we are in, experience lack a missing component, which is spin. Our body requires those frequencies to have a spin for, in order for it to understand it. All natural frequencies have spin. Artificial frequencies don't. Your products are helping to restore or, or to, to, to give spin to artificial frequencies so that our body can better understand it. There are other products out there on the market which, which act more as blockers, which, which, which aren't really transforming frequencies, but are more blocking frequencies. So I was curious about something like Oregon or some of these other products. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, about, about that? Yes. So, so Oregon, if people don't know what it is, it's a generally crystals and metals in a resin format. So that those crystals have a frequency that they're emitting. Those metals have a frequency. Everything has a frequency, right? So is it the right frequency for you? And when was that frequency formed? So this is also the question that we always ask. Um, or are they allowing you that access to the synchronized information. So for example, if it's a crystal, that's a natural crystal that was formed like millions of years ago, um, that uh, crystal is not going to be up to date today because um, the, uh, the entire spectrum of frequency changes every thousand years. So it's not, it's not dynamic. It's not reacting in a dynamic it, it, way. It might be dynamic, but uh, it's, it's working on the, um, um, on past information that is not uh, useful today. It might not actually be uh, negative. It might actually have some effect, uh, some benefit. Uh, it's very difficult to determine because biology is so complicated. So um, just this I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but we're, we're actually only have one minute left. We actually went oh, wow. for, for a full hour. So why don't we just oh give a quick, quick recap? Uh, well, not really a recap, but where, where can people find out more information for you guys? Where can they go to learn more? So our website is umatrixit.com. So Y-O-U-M-A-T-R-I-X-I-T.com. Yeah. Um, that's where we're going to, we're planning on putting video series on there that will talk touch yeah. on all of these different topics as you, as you can yeah. see we have a lot to share so <laughs> yeah maybe maybe a, whole, a series rather than trying to cram everything into an hour but this was really great Absolutely. thank you so much for for joining me i think we we got some really good tidbits some really good uh, overview of, of how emf affects our biology and um it was really great and uh what a great yes. setting thank you <laughs> thank you for inviting thank us thank you so yes. much for having us Oh, and, and to leave you on a note of our favorite French bulldog, outside of Patrick, of course, is... Oh, I'm not a bulldog. <laughs>
<laughs> Hi, Bruiser. Oh, very cute. All right, guys. So, thank you so much. We'll see you. Right. Take care. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Mike. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.